Today we're going to change the water pump on the 7.3 power stroke diesel 2002. I'm also going to change the degas bottle because it has a couple cracks in it that are leaking at pressure. We've got the sinister diesel coolant filter. Not a big deal. Just plugs in right here to this return line. Comes from the water pump right down there. We're also going to replace the thermostat while we have the water pump out. And instead of that pressed housing, we are going to go with a billet housing to make things a little nicer. So to begin with, we're gonna drain the coolant. Here are the new parts we're gonna put in the truck. Gates, water pump, new O-rings and hardware for that. This new billet water pump housing outlet. Right, it'll go right on top there. Instead of just the pressed metal, it has that spot for an O-ring and it'll clamp down real nice. New. Ford Motorcraft thermostat. And then I'm pretty excited about this piece. Nice little piece of eye candy. This will be the new degas bottle from Mishimoto. All aluminum welded. Nice little sight glass right there. Also already tapped and threaded for a uh, aftermarket coolant temp gauge if I ever want to add that. So those are the parts that are going to be going back into the truck today after this finishes draining and we get all this taken apart. Coolant is down out of the degas bottle. It's low enough. I'm going to go ahead and take this bracket off of here, get the hoses disconnected, take the degas bottle off, take the fan shroud off, take the fan off with a fan clutch tool, and then we'll be ready to access the water pump and take the serpentine belt off, hoses off, upper and lower. If you do much socket or um, bolt work at all, I really recommend this wrench from Milwaukee Electronic Nut Runner. Such a time saver. All right, here's what we've got now. We've got the upper radiator hose off, the outlet housing for the top of the water pump off, the thermostat is out, that little coolant filter is folded back over there, took the return line off there, took the degas bottle out. Now what we're going to do, use a fan clutch tool right there, remove the fan. All right, so we have the fan clutch out now, and or the fan and the fan clutch and the shroud out. The uh, way you get this fan clutch off is, I just rented this tool from AutoZone, fan clutch removal tool. This wrench goes right here on this nut to turn it, to undo it, and then to hold the pulley, put a half inch breaker bar on this guy after you find the right size. And then he goes down there and goes right between all four, all four of those nuts and holds that clutch tool right there. Now we have access to Oh, actually, on that fan shroud, just let me know two things real quick. You've got a bolt there and a bolt there. And just be careful with the radiator because it's exposed right there. So I'd recommend you um, loosen the fan, then remove these two screws. There's two catches for the shroud at the bottom. You can see right here where it just sets in. Finish unscrewing the fan and then just carefully lift them both out of there. Now I'm probably gonna put some cardboard on there or just drape something down there. So that as I'm working there, I just don't back up and dent the radiator. All right, there we are. Just cut a piece of cardboard, cut a hole for the screw too, and just put it in there. Now we've got a nice area to work. Radiator's protected. Water pump is off, you can see there. Lost a bunch of coolant when I did that because it came out of the engine block, but there it is. That's the old one. Took the fittings out of here for the heater uh, heater line, the temperature sensor, the coolant um, filter, and then um, I'm transferring over those fittings to the new one. Um, looking at this one, I think it's a Gates as well. That's what I'm putting back on the truck. I'm not exactly sure why it was leaking because this is all nice and secure. There aren't any leaks coming out of there. It was leaking somewhere up in here, so I mean the gasket all looked good and everything, but it was intermittently leaking, so 
It wasn't a bad pump, it just somehow developed a leak. But anyway, um, something that, so I put that pump on about five years ago, and something that I've been plagued with problems about is this nipple that goes right in here. The O-ring that goes on top of it, because they're not tapered threads, it just goes down and mushes down on the O-ring. This is the O-ring, and it bottoms out on the threads before it really crushes the O-ring. So fortunately, I have a bunch of O-rings, and I was able to choose a fatter one. So now, when we thread this down in here, it should squish pretty nice. And, uh not have a leak there like I used to have. It would be just like that little bubbly stuff coming out of there. I'm gonna put some more sealant on that. That guy goes in there. I just took the bolts when I took out the old one and came over here and put them in the new one so I know where all the long ones went. And then I'm going to take, let's see, this lower radiator hose. And when I did this, you can see how stretched that is. It was a pain to put that on there, I remember, and I had to trim it because from factory, it turns a corner like this and just goes right into the water pump, and it's just a little fitting like this, and it's much easier to get on, but this new style um, turns the corner for you. That's the new one because it's the same brand. I'm going to be able to just reuse this piece, put a new gasket on that, clean it up a bit. I wasn't sure, so I do have a new hose that I can return, but uh, I have the around the serpentine belt upper radiator hose. That one was looking pretty bad, so I just ran to O'Reilly's and picked up this Gates brand um, coolant hose. But yeah, anyway, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna uh, basically just reverse everything we did earlier. Of course, we'll be torquing to torque specs on the way back in. I'm going to put anti-seize on, never seize on the bolts before I put them in. They were all really easy to take out, so I was happy about that. I'll clean this up, clean up the mating surface so the gasket gets a nice seal. And then we'll just start putting it back together. All right, so now we have the water pump all assembled back together, all the components and pieces on it and just put this on the o-rings before i put them in um that thing's ready to go while i have the fan shroud and fan out i decided to do something i've been wanting to do for a while let me show you here like that you know they all get 18 foot pounds of torque or thereabouts and let me put this guy back in put this guy back on and that's the new billet water pump housing outlet you can see that got the new thermostat in there as well we're about done just like that bob's your uncle all finished up that tank went in there nice i'll probably put a billet cap on there eventually but that works nice little sight window right there tapped for a aftermarket coolant sensor turned out pretty nice it's the new water pump and the new housing bracket. Used a brass brush to clean up the um, front of the engine where the water pump seal meets. So that, that worked out well for that. And I also used a little razor blade, but yeah, pretty, pretty straightforward. Doing that transmission line was kind of the trickiest part. Everything else was just super smooth sailing. Thanks for following along. If you enjoyed it, Give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, please leave it down in the comments below. And I'll catch you in the next video.